Hi everyone, I'm John Tarilla, one of the authors of Topology, a Categorical Approach. In topology, as in many mathematical fields, there are ways to construct new objects from old ones. We have products, quotients, subspaces, unions, and other constructions. In this video, I'm going to talk about the subspace topology in order to illustrate how some universal categorical ideas explain why we construct certain topologies the way we do. So let X be a topological space and let A be a subset of X. We'd like to make the subset A into a topological space. That is, we would like to specify which subsets of A should be open. How should we do it? In almost any point set topology book, you'll see the following definition of the subspace topology. A subset of A is open if it is the intersection of an open subset of X with A. The collection of these sets defines a topology, it should be checked that it is a topology, called the subspace topology. I'm denoting it here with tau sub subspace. Now, this tells you what the subspace topology on a subset of a topological space is, but it doesn't tell you why this should be the subspace topology. Why should this be the subspace topology? Is it, is it a good definition because we can't think of another definition? Should this be the subspace topology because the authorities tell us, trust us, this is the definition that works when we use it in practice? I wouldn't expect you to be satisfied with those reasons. So let me give you first one and then an even better definition of the subspace topology. For the first reason, consider the fact that there is a natural inclusion map mapping the subset A into the space X. You'd really like to have this arrow in the category of topological spaces. So whatever the subspace topology on A will turn out to be, you want the natural inclusion to be continuous. And this doesn't completely determine the subspace topology, but it puts a lower bound on what it can be. That is, there are many topologies on A for which the inclusion map is continuous, like the discrete topology. Uh, if you declare every subset of A to be open, then every map from A to any topological space will be continuous. However, putting the discrete topology on a subspace A is usually not a good choice. The reason is that there will exist continuous functions from a topological space Z to the space X, whose image lies entirely in A, which will not be continuous when viewed as a map into A with the discrete topology. This is pathological. We don't want the continuity of a map to depend on enlarging or shrinking harmlessly the codomain. Now, we can eliminate this pathology if we define the subspace topology to be the smallest topology for which the inclusion is continuous. I think this is a better definition. We can improve on this definition if we look more closely at the situation that we'd like to avoid. We want to avoid topologies on A for which there exists a discontinuous function from a space Z to A, which becomes continuous after post-composing with the natural inclusion of A into X. We can, with a sleight of hand, simply turn what we want to avoid into a desired property. Namely, for all spaces Z and all functions from Z to A, the function Z into A is continuous if and only if the function from Z into A followed by the inclusion into X is continuous. Let's take a moment to understand the logic here. We take a space X and a subset A and the natural inclusion of A into X. We can put a topology on A and then ask whether it has the following property. For all spaces Z and all functions F from Z to A, the function F is continuous if and only if the composition F followed by the inclusion, which is a map from Z into X, is continuous. The claim is that the subspace topology is uniquely characterized by this property. And we can break down this claim into two parts. 
First, the subspace topology has this property. I sort of already explained this part by saying the subspace topology doesn't have the negation of this property. Anyway, I'll leave it as an exercise to write down a proof. The second part of the claim, and the more interesting one, is that the subspace topology is the only topology on the set A that has this property. To prove it, suppose tau is a topology on A that has the property. That is, for all spaces Z and all maps F from Z to A, F is continuous if and only if the composition of F with the inclusion into X is continuous. We proceed in two steps. The first step is to set the space Z equal to A with this topology tau and let F be the identity function. The identity function from a space to itself with the same topology is always continuous. So the special property tells us that the inclusion of that the inclusion into X is continuous. Now, since the subspace topology is the smallest topology for which the inclusion is continuous, we can conclude that the topology tau has to be larger than the subspace topology. For the second step, let Z be the set A with the subspace topology and let F be the identity function again. Now, we don't know that the identity function from A with the subspace topology to A with the topology tau is continuous. But we know that the inclusion of A with the subspace topology into X is continuous. That's because of the way that subspace topology is defined so that the inclusion into X is continuous. Then the property that tau satisfies implies that the identity map is continuous, which means that every set in the topology tau is also in the subspace topology. That is, tau is smaller than the subspace topology. Putting these two conclusions together allows us to see that tau must be equal to the subspace topology. As a final remark, let me say that the topologies on products, quotients, unions can be defined in several ways. One way is to say what the open sets are. This might provide you with a definition, but it won't tell you why it's a good definition. A better way might be to characterize the topology as the smallest or largest topology making some kind of fundamental function continuous. Alternatively, these topologies can be characterized by saying precisely which maps into them or out of them are continuous. These characterizations tell us why these are the right constructions, and they also tell us everything we need to know to use them. That's all for this video. Thank you for your attention.